so um, let's hop back over to the, the S&P. So I'm going to show you um, a way to uh, kind of gauge these uh, market moves using volatility and um, standard deviations. And so this kind of, we won't go through the whole slingshot, but uh, basically we're, we're going to use a um, little bit of trend analysis, but in, um, in, in, you know, a moving average type of setting, but um, we're also going to look at, at how to identify volatility expansion. Cause what that helps us do is determine, you know, if we're in an uptrend, like we've had this, um, the strong uptrend um, over the past you know month or so, um, and then and then we get into this uh, kind of unexpected sell-off situation. Well, how do we you know determine that there's a higher likelihood for these occurrences? Um, and so we do that using the uh, the Bollinger bands. Um, so we're just going to add those to our chart. Um, because what the Bollinger Bands show us, and let me know if you guys can't see the bands um, well enough, but hopefully you can see them. I'll, I'm going to zoom in here too. Um, um, so what they tell us is how where is price relative to a two standard deviation move, and you can you can manipulate the settings of the indicator, but um, but uh, you know you want to you want to um, in our, for the purpose of how we're using them use what's usually the default setting on most charting platforms a, a, a twenty period uh, moving average for your center band and then a two standard deviation setting so basically just you know you in your uh, Bollinger band indicator settings um, put in two for the upper band and two for the lower band. So what that means is that these bands are two standard deviations away from the average. So that helps us uh, determine, um, you know, how far price is from, from an average uh, price. And um, they're, they're used a lot of different ways, but one of the, one of the best ways I, I think to use them and probably also one of the most uncommon ways and surprisingly a lot of people don't use them this way is um, is to identify potential you know up moves and down moves or, or sell offs in the market. Um, so generally when you see uh, relatively low volatility, um, you're going to see the bands often closer together and often parallel or even converging, moving towards each other. Or maybe you'll see one band parallel and the other one converging towards it. Um, and that generally tells us that, you know, the security is not making very strong directional moves at the moment. So you can see like in the S&P, we're just in this low volatility range. And, and interestingly, if you look at the actual ranges for the day, they're, they're fairly small, fairly tight compared to when you get a volatility expansion. So um, often what we'll see in a volatility expansion is we'll see the, the bands start to, uh, the outer bands start to diverge. Um, and that happens more dra dramatically in a sell-off. Um, and then what we're also looking for is where is price relative to the standard deviation from the, from the mean, the center band? Um, and what, what we'll see like in an uptrend, like we've had from mid, roughly mid July is we'll see price come two standard deviations away from the, the middle band or the average and start to trail the, the upper band. So we're also seeing the middle band and then eventually the lower band, both sloping up. So that's a bullish volatility expansion um, and what it looks like. So um, for a, a market sell-off, and, and I'm gonna point out here as well, because we, you know, we had this big run up, what's our indicator 
that this this uh, uptrend might reverse. Um, it's when you see price trail the upper standard deviation band, um, and then you get a close below the average or the middle band. That is often a clue that price um, or, or the the asset will sell off to some degree. Um, so our clue is right here on this candle. Um, and it was in the context of a previous strong uptrend or you know bullish volatility expansion. Um, so once that occurs, then what we're looking for is a bearish volatility expansion. And what that looks like is exactly what's happening now. So we had, and the one other thing too that gives us a clue of a potential sell-off is, vo is um, volatility contraction. So see how the outer volatility bands are converging now and moving towards each other and they're tightening up. So we're looking for after, after an uptrend or a move up in a security, we're looking for volatility contraction. And that it, again is the band, both the upper and lower band pointing towards each other. That tells us volatility is contracting, which is important because in the context of an uptrend, and if you look at this uptrend, the outer band never converged and pointed back down towards the lower band until right here. That was our, that was our warning. We actually also got a sell signal from trade trend up here that triggered, and it's still actually an active signal on the S&P. So the entry was um, kind of right around 4250 area and is still an open signal with the S&P trading down below 4,000. So that was a great signal, um, particularly as we saw the uh, volatility contraction taking place after this run up in the S&P. So then um, again, then what we look for, close below the average, happened on this day here. Um, and for a confirmation of um, what, and again, this is where the slingshot comes in, where what we call the slingshot is in volatility expansion is those previously converging bands diverging. So what that's telling us, so they're pointing away from each other, the upper and lower band, we're seeing the middle band turn over and start to point lower. So that is our clue that there's an expansion of volatility. And in this case, it's in the context of price trailing the lower band. So there's a sell-off. And what I'm looking for is, um, is price, so it didn't happen on this candle, is price to touch or exceed that lower band. So today and yesterday that happened. So often when this occurs, we'll see um, a more dramatic sell-off because we're getting volatility expansion. Outer volatility bands diverging, widening, average price turning over, previously in an, in an upslope, turning over, starting to slope downward. Um, and usually with significant volatility expansions, whether they're to the upside or to the downside. Um, so this can be used for short trade setups, can be used for long trade setups. Um, we see a return to the volatility expansion. Um, but it should that should be taken in the context with the asset that you're looking at. With the, the major indices, since they have a long-term upward trending bias, it's less reliable to the upside, but it did actually happen here. So here is our volatility expansion. Um, see, we had the band volatility contraction previously, bands pointing towards each other. They start to diverge. And again, with a bullish diver, um, diverging volatility expansion, um, we really are looking for the upper band to move away from the lower band. And then we're looking again for price to touch or exceed um, just from the high, it doesn't have to be on a close, the upper band. And there's our volatility expansion. Um, 
And then once that move is over and it either corrects or retraces to a level, um, it often will come back down into the level of the volatility expansion. So see how it started right here and we sold off right back into that level where buyers came in and started a driving price up. So that also happens to the downside. In particular, it's very reliable to the downside on the major indices like the S&P because um, again, they have a long-term upward trending bias and uh, there are, it, when there's a volatility expansion and a sell-off, it eventually attracts enough buyers at lower price levels. Um, so we're in the midst of one right now as price is trailing the lower band. So how do we determine you know, when that sell-off or volatility expansion? So we know it's happening, right? We're watching it right now actually happen. Um, and we need to be careful that, you know, markets are selling off and they could continue to sell off. Um, how do we know when, you know, the sell-off is potentially over and we get a mean reversion back to the center band or even higher? Um, and that's where our support for, for a, a sell-off situation like we're in now, where our support analysis is important. Um, so we're looking for previous levels of support um, to hold within this volatility expansion. So if price like continues to trail this, um, we've got a century mark at 3,900, right? And we've got some we have areas of support and resistance right around the century mark. So this could be a potential turning point for this sell-off and volatility expansion. So that's kind of how you spot it to, to begin with. Now, again, just go over it real quick. So we've got volatility contraction. Um, in this case, to the upside, it was a, an uptrend. We um, start to see the, you know, the bands, which in a strong volatility contraction uh, to the upside will eventually be running parallel, all three bands. Um, and our clue to when that, that ended, and we would be looking for horizontal resistance in this case, right? So there it was. We come up into this resistance level around 43.25. Uh, quarter century mark, and then we get a close below the lower band. And then next we're looking for price to touch or exceed that lower band while the outer volatility bands are simultaneously um, diverging or pointing away from each other. That's what a volatility expansion looks like in the context of an uptrend or a sell-off. And how we can spot those you know, starting early on before the sell-off really accelerates. Um, and then we wanna, again, look at support for a volat volatility expansion to the downside to look for potential uh, areas where the market might reverse. Um, and, and so from that point, we need to, you know, be patient and wait for price to, uh, to move off that level. So we're looking for rejection of support and then a rotation higher. Um, and that can happen at, obviously at any support level. So maybe that 3,900 doesn't hold and we move down into 3,825, which is a support level, or we move down into, you know, 3,750 which is a support level, or we move down into 3650, which is a support level where we've had previous rotation higher from a sell-off. So these are all levels of support that we would map and monitor as the sell-off ensues. 
Okay. And then once we see um, indication that price is, that that level's holding and price is starting to, buyers are coming in and price is starting to move back up off of that support level. And that could happen, you know, at any level of support. Um, that can help us identify when the sell-off is ending and a new uptrend is potentially starting. And then once that occurs, um, with a very high degree of reliability on the major indices, we see price and buyers come in and push price high back up into that level of volatility expansion. So where that sell-off started to trail the lower volatility band. So that'd be kind of right around the 40, 50 level. So we can, we'll follow up on, on this in future weekly sessions, but you'll see this, mark my words, this sell-off will end and reverse, and it will come back up to 40, 50 at a minimum. Often we see, uh, you know, the sling, and that's why we call it a slingshot. We'll see price get propelled even higher um, as, as more buyers come in on the reversal. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like and how you identify it. And then, and how we can use that, you know, to not just spot potential turning points uh, after a run up in the market or after a sell off, um, but then formulate strategy around it, you know, for, for bullish and bearish cases. In this case, in a, in a bearish volatility expansion, we'd be looking for bullish strategies um, off of these levels within the volatility expansion. Um, so that's just on the S&P. And as we get here in just a, a minute to take a round table, we can look at this also in individual stocks. Because again, it works really well um, across all asset classes and all time frames. So this is, of course, just the daily chart on the S&P, but this methodology can be applied to any asset in any time frame. So that's, that's how we analyze volatility expansion, whether it's bullish or bearish, and um, where there's potential for turning points after a run-up in the market or a sell-off. So uh, any, any questions, Richard, there? Then we can uh, kind of spill this over into our ticker roundtable so we can look at that. Let's see, uh, Manchu just said, and I agree 100% that the analysis of volatility contraction expansion is excellent and it's very useful. And I got to say, like for me personally, this is probably the slingshot strategy. It's probably top three, of my favorite all time strategies. And as, as, as you said, um, you know, this works on all, all markets and all time frames. So this happens, you know, several times a day. If you find the right setup, I mean, it's, it could be your bread and butter. I did, it's that great. So I encourage you guys to watch it over again. Yeah, it's definitely a bread and butter strategy for me. Um, yeah, and it, yeah. it really gives you a lot of confidence to, to, to identify, you know, turning points in the market and sell-offs and because, you know, volatility and, and it's really the true power of the Bollinger Bands, in my opinion, um, because they're used so many other ways, which I think are far less effective. This is really a I believe the best way to use them, um, you know, relative to how a lot of people use them, which is buying off the lower band and selling off the top band, because that fails um, very, very often. And when it fails, it fails catastrophically. 